girl be in harmony and I know it's been a long time since I've been in front of the camera talking to you guys but a lot has been going on with my family with me myself if you have not noticed already you see clavicles <laughs> if you can tell from the last video I posted that I have lost a tremendous amount of pounds <laughs> a tremendous amount of weight that I am so happy to share with you guys um, I still have a long way to go but um, we are at least at the halfway mark as of today but this video is necessarily about what I have done or the steps that I've taken and the tips that I have learned throughout my journey so far losing up to 30 pounds in three months that's right 30 pounds in three months <laughs> so if you are ready for these tips stay tuned oh please don't forget to like and subscribe press those buttons right there please okay so thank you so much and let's just get started all right so i have a pad right here and i'm trying to go through this as quickly as i possibly can because i spent like an hour just trying to configure my camera back to the mic and my phone and all this kind of stuff and so my battery is about to die soon so but there's only 10 tips anyway with the first tip i recommend you evaluate yourself and set a weight loss goal not only just weight loss but a workout goal what i mean by that is say to yourself and ask yourself what is it that i am bothered with as of right now with my weight what is it that i want to change what is it that's hindering me from feeling good about myself how many pounds do i want to lose in order for me to feel comfortable in my own body asking yourself those questions you can even write it down you can um keep thinking about it over and over until you find your answers this is the start of you setting a goal you have all these wants all these desires to be a certain way but you need to know exactly what it is you want <laughs> you know um, when I started I knew for a fact that I wanted to be down to a 150 when I started my journey I was exactly 227.8 pounds that was my pregnant while I was pregnant weight <laughs> before I was pregnant I was 215 and so I just could not stand to look at myself I could not fit in any of my clothes and I refused to buy 2x L's in clothes and I said I cannot do this I do not want to be like this anymore I want to live longer for my kid I want to live longer for myself I want to feel beautiful again as I as I felt like I used to when I was younger. So I evaluated the things that I wanted. I said, I want to get down to 150. Okay, I want to be able to fit a size eight jean or a size seven jean. I want to be able to do a workout that I can stay consistent with. You ever did a workout and you only did it for maybe a month and then you're back to where you started because you ended up having so much stuff to do that you neglected working out and you just don't think about it anymore um, and you don't have the time you don't make the time for it only have to worry about my battery I have to also worry about my car being full so let's go back <laughs> okay so what I was talking about was making sure that I'm, I want to be able to work out more than a month I want to be able to at least give myself four months of dedicated working out um, and let's just start from there see where I'm at from there and then continue on hopefully to better motivate myself with the results I hope to gain I I want to push myself okay once you set your goal you said I want to lose this amount of weight and approximately this amount of time I want to work out more consistently I want to work out three times a week two times a week five times a week six times a week um, you have set a goal on what you want to do now for tip two the thing is for you to find something that's doable and fun for you so that that goal is achievable you can't work out in the gym lifting weights all the time running if you don't like lifting weights and running it's not going to work like whatsoever is not going to work um, I have done that um, I went to I hate I hate running <laughs> um, when I lost the last time I lost a, sub, a substantial amount of weight I walked on the treadmill but I walked on the incline but that for me is it, it did it wonders because I don't like running I think it's bad for your knees but 
it was boring, you know? I just sat on the treadmill and I just walked for an hour on incline. I sweated my butt off, but that is not fun for me. It's not something that I'm going to look forward to every day, five times a week, uh, for a whole hour. It's not gonna be fun. So what I did is that I got, uh, actually I was introduced to Beachbody by a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, and they just so happened to have a program out. If you don't know already that I used to dance, I used to do ballet, hip hop, and all types of uh, dance genres, but they came out with a program that was based around ballet. And I saw the previews that she sent me, um, and I was like, oh yes, <laughs> I'm hooked. I so wanna do this, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna give me, it, it kinda puts me back into when I was in high school and I did the ballet. It made me feel really good to know that, okay, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna work out, but yeah, I'm also going to kind of uh, brush up on my skills from doing ballet, you know? And so that was fun for me. Um, Beachbody has been such a phenomenal program to be with. I, I love it hands down. I love the supplements that they give, the Shakeology, the the uh, performance supplements. I, I love them all. And so I've been doing it now since January 6th, which was about four and a half months now. And I, hands down, the best program I have ever done. They keep me accountable and everything, but we'll go into that later. Yes, yeah, so finding that program was something fun for me, something that's doable, something that, because it only lasted 30 to 40 minutes a day. I have a kid, that is too easy. I can either work out while he's napping or I can work out when he's eating his own breakfast or lunch, depends on what time I want to do it. But that was doable for me in my schedule. So you have to find out what's doable for you. Whether or not you want to take uh, take on a trainer who can train you in 30 to 40 minutes. Maybe that trainer can come to your house and you guys can work out in your garage or you guys can go to a park and he just run you up and down doing different exercises. Maybe though some people like to do Zumba. Um, there's a whole lot of YouTube uh, challenges going on right now. I particularly love challenges. I don't like to just be on a just work out every day with no regimen or nothing to look forward to. I like challenges. So they, I, right now, I, um, I took a break from doing a program because I just finished a program, a boxing program from Beachbody. And I'm doing a two week challenge by Chloe Team, the ab uh, workout. So I'm gonna do a video on that um, uh, later. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Challenge after challenge after challenge. I'm challenging myself, it's fun. Um, it hurts like hell, but it's fun. And um, it, ha it, gave you, it gives you something to look forward to. It gives you an end goal to that challenge and all you do is keep looking for the next challenge. They have 30 day challenges, they have 60 day challenges. Do something that's doable for you. Okay, the third tip I want to share has helped me tremendously. Not only does Beachbody offer different uh, ways of communicating with other Beachbody members, there's a whole lot of people who are just working out. So whether you can do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, find yourself a support group. Whether you guys have uh, a specific challenge that are, that is in common, a specific program that you guys have in common, Zumba, a class or whatever, those whom you work out with, if you work out with multiple women or men, get, get together in those groups and have conversations, have motivational, um, discussions and stuff like that share your journey with them and you'll see that that and their their journey and your journey combined and everybody's being happy and everybody's doing doing the best that they can the motivation just really helps you it pushes you um, up probably like three or four levels than you thought you would on your own motivation is key and to have motivation you need motivation within yourself we also thrive on how other people see us and if other people who are doing the same thing as you can support you you can support them you guys can um say hey yes good job that you that you finished that challenge hey good job that even though you you couldn't do the whole 40 minutes but you got 15 minutes done good job for pushing through good job that you lost five pounds good job that you that you gain muscle that you can fit in a size six jean like good job you have all that support and all that good energy and good vibes surrounding you through social media and stuff like that that really really helps you to level up in your workout and just being overall motivated to work out and to get fit 
Um, so that has helped me so much. We do daily check-ins, we do um, challenges. We Every week we talk on each other, talk to each other on Zoom. Um, we have little games and stuff that we play. I, I, I swear my results would not have been the same without my support group. I love them to death. <laughs> I am so involved in it. Every day I'm checking in on it. Every day I'm motivating other people to uh, keep pushing. Um, we share each other's downfalls and we tell them, say, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it's going to be okay. Just get up, get out there and do what you need to do. You know, you have a purpose. And you know, we want to share our purpose with the world. You want to share it with, I don't care if it's only one other person. You know, have someone that you can do this along with. Okay, now my fourth tip is to evaluate yourself and set a nutritional goal. Okay, there's a lot, a lot of diets out there, but we want to make sure that we can do something that's going to be consistent. Okay, there's keto, there's intermittent fasting, there's uh, low carb, low carb diets, uh, all kinds of diets, fat, high fat diets, high high protein diets. There's all kind of diets out there, but you don't want to go on a diet. You want to do something that's going to be more consistent. So what I mean to set a goal is, what have you done in the past, and what have you seen other people do that you think that you can do? Say, have a plate of food that you normally eat. Okay, look at that plate of food and ask yourself what are the things on that plate you can do without, okay? I'm not telling you to completely change everything that you eat. You need to change it drastically if you want to see results. So let's say if you had a plate of food, what on there can you live without? Not what you can live without for a week, but what can you do without over a course of a month? You know, I won't have to, I don't have to eat macaroni and cheese this month. <laughs> I won't have to eat cheesecake this month. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though some days you can indulge it and we'll get into that later, but take something off that plate that you would normally eat and, and, and keep on there all the tr nutritional things. Like, okay, I had collard greens. Collard greens, there's nothing wrong with collard greens. Maybe a little less salt, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with collard greens. Oh, I have um, my eggs. I have bacon or sausage on there. Oh, that's great. That's high protein, high fats. I, I like avocados. I like my vegetables. You know, keep all that stuff on your plate. But take out the stuff that you know you can live without for a month. Start there. Start at a month. I don't, I don't want to eat a high carbs for at least a month. Um, so the macaroni and cheese got to go. Let's say instead of having a whole uh, french fries, potato wedges, or baked potato, I'll substitute it with a sweet potato. It tastes so much better and it's sweeter. I'll substitute that for uh, a sweet potato. And instead of eating a whole sweet potato, I'll take half of the sweet potato. Just start there, you know? Set that as a goal first. See what kind of recipes you can create with the things that you have on that plate. You can do so many different um, recipes using collard greens and carrots and then some some chicken breast. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? There's no, that, and then you ha, you'll go in there and say, that's not many carbs. Collard greens has what? A, a few carbs because it's a vegetable, but that's mostly fiber. That's the fiber carbs. So you're not eating a whole lot of complex carbs and sugary carbs, but you're eating the fiber. Do it like that. Or if you say you want to do intermittent fasting, that's fine. If you feel like you want to do, uh, what is it, 16 to 8. Me, I'm doing 16 to 8. I eat from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I don't, uh, and I have 16 hours of not eating and fasting except for green tea before I eat my meal the next day at 1 o'clock. Or some people do from 5 to 5 to 7. You know, it depends on how your schedule is. You don't have to intermittent fast at all. Some people say, I wanna eat three times a day. I wanna be able to snack throughout the day, fine. Just make sure to proportion. Now, intermittent fasting has helped me tremendously. Intermittent fasting has a lot of benefits. Even if you have diabetes, if you have um, different kind of insulin problems and stuff like that, it helps with that. Look up intermittent fasting and see if it's something that you can do. You don't have to do the whole 16-8 like I do. Like there's different times that you can fast. Um, so just look it up. But it has definitely helped me a lot in losing weight. And, I, and being the fact that I only eat from one to eight has helped me with 
one curbing curbing my appetite <laughs> after i work out i only have the shake and maybe an egg or something and then i'll snack on some peanuts um some avocado or a salad and then for dinner i'll have a bunch of cauliflower rice with whatever meat and vegetables that i decide i wanted to have that night um so yeah so intermittent fasting um you can you can meal prep i don't necessarily meal prep because i just don't have time every week but meal prepping has helped so many people to know that they can just go into the fridge and just take out what they want to eat and it's already proportioned and that's it they don't have any, they don't have to think about it anymore so you can definitely do that so setting a nutritional goal definitely helps i want to I want to be able to drop down the amount of sugars I have per day. I want to be able to drop down the amount of um, fat I have a day. I want to drop down in protein. Set a, set a goal in what you plan on doing that will help you and your body type <laughs> to lose the weight that you need to lose. Okay, tip number five is to stick to that nutrition regimen and make it simple. Do not overthink your meals because that will put you in a downward <laughs> emotional roller coaster when you can't figure out what you want to eat and you're just like well bump it i'm just gonna take this gummy bears and cookies and i'm just gonna eat something right now because i'm hungry no you need to be able to make simple meals i don't eat the same thing every day but i kind of have the same thing every day if you catch my drift what i mean is Okay, like I just explained, and tip number four, after I work out, I either have my Shakeology, I have boiled eggs, a keto bread that I make, and I'll put some almond butter on there. I have about five different breakfast options. So those five different breakfast options, one, two, three, four, five, I can just say, oh, I plan on doing option three today. <laughs> and boom, I don't, have to, I don't have to think about it, because it's simple five breakfast op options for snacks i only eat like three types of snacks i have pork rinds because it's high in fat and it doesn't have any carbs in it i'll have peanuts which is pecans walnuts anything like that i'll and i will have um my strawberries berries i will have fruit and those are my snacks and i'm pretty good with that <laughs> I kept that simple. I don't have, I, when I go to the grocery store, I pick those up. I keep those in the refrigerator. I keep it on my shelf and I always have that to go to. I'm not looking for nothing else. <laughs> I have a kid who has snacks and stuff like that. He has his own cabinet. I keep all his stuff there. But for me, my stuff is in a basket and I go in that basket if I want a snack and pick that up. So simple. So, so simple. You don't have to just do three snacks. You can do five snacks if you want to, but make them nutritional, make them um, less in calories you don't want to have a whole bunch of calories at snack but do something um, that you can just pick up eat it real quick just to curb your, hun curb your hunger and satisfy you for that moment um, so yeah and then for dinner I will make I have an instant pot which has been the best thing I have <laughs> that my husband bought me um, the instant pot has saved me from doing some crazy meals because all i have to do is literally if i want chicken i can put that chicken in there with some water and some seasoning and do it for 10 minutes and it is done <laughs> okay i am good to go <laughs> y'all my <laughs> darn sd card got full again so i just went ahead and just switched the sd cards and so hopefully this one will be good for the rest <laughs> of uh, the tips I have to give, but I think I left off with uh, setting a nutritional goal and then making it simple. Okay, so like for dinner, I would go and have the chicken or whatever, fish, shrimp, or whatever I would put in the Instant Pot, and then I would make cauliflower rice on the side. It's either cauliflower rice or salad. Cauliflower rice or salad. Like, it was so simple. I'll even like have some broccoli, steamed vegetables that I'll steam uh, earlier that week. A bunch of vegetables mixed in together and then I'll have whatever poultry I want to have and then have that vegetable on the side and that's just pretty simple to me it's different kind of meals because you can put any type of seasoning on you on, on it I'll put whatever sauce on I want on it like teriyaki I, I love my Asian cuisines that I have that I make um, so I will have that my husband has been such a great supporter on this and he'll eat what I eat and I don't have to worry about making two meals um, so as long as it tastes good <laughs> you know and my son he's he's simple he can just eat you know the chicken and then I'll have um, some vegetables and some fruit for him so I really don't have to go around making a whole bunch of meals and different meals for everybody in the household we pretty much eat 
eat the same thing. And it's all healthy because who doesn't want to be healthy? Um, and he sees what I'm doing. I'm losing the weight. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better, better results at eating because you know eating is definitely 75 to 8 percent of you losing weight. Um, so doing that would definitely help you either maintain your weight or, or getting the results that you want at the time in the time frame that you. Um, expect it. Okay, so tip number six is to set a schedule that is doable for you um, and do not rely on that schedule to be the it schedule for like a year because things happen and things change. My schedule during this journey has changed already three times. It's only been four months because I have a kid and he he's very needy. First, I wasn't working out while he was taking his naps. Um, he was up and at it. He was around and I thought I'd be able to work out and just have him run around and do whatever he he does but he started to get really really clingy to mommy <laughs> wanted to hold on to my leg every time i would do my crunches or something on the floor he wants to sit on top of me and it just it just wasn't working and i wasn't getting a efficient workout so i decided to work out while he was napping and that also played along with my intermittent fasting because if he naps at around noon i can work out around noon and i'm done by one o'clock and therefore i can eat after i work out and so that kind of became the thing that i i did for a long time but he would work and he would sleep for like two hours so that means i would have time to work out take a shower and eat all in the same time um but he got older <laughs> and he is his naps turned from two hours to only one hour and sometimes those workouts are only 40 minutes long and sometimes i would do an additional like i want to go on the elliptical for 20 minutes or i want to do some um like legs or something like that and in addition to the videos that i was doing it just depends on my mood or what i was or what i was feeling so with him only taking one hour naps i wasn't able to get everything done that i needed to get done so i changed my schedule again so what I now do is work out while he's eating breakfast because I'm intermittent fasting anyway. Working out while intermittent fasting is also beneficial. So while he's eating, he has that 40 minutes to grub, eat, watch his little show on his tablet, and I'm able to get my workout then. Because right after he eats, he plays for maybe like 20 minutes and then it's his nap time. And I'll use that nap time to take my shower and eat for myself. So that has been the schedule for that works for me like that's it um i don't see any it getting any better than that um the only times that i feel like it will go wompy something like something like that is if i had to be out during the times that I, he normally eats or I, he normally naps or something like that and so it throws me off but i still get the workout in i just um just sacrifice that that private workout and just work out while he's running around but that doesn't happen um quite often at all it only happens maybe like two or three times so that's what i've been doing so it's better for you to set a schedule that is going to work around the things that matter okay if you have kids working working around your kids schedule if you have to work work working around your work schedule say if you have work at eight o'clock in the morning get up at at six o'clock in the morning so that way you can have 40 minutes to work out and then take a shower and get yourself ready for work i'm not a morning person so i six o'clock in the morning is just not going to be my thing okay if you not worried about working out during your fasting times you can work out in the evening if you if you want to while your kids are asleep and you have that time to yourself that extra hour do your workout then if you have a lunch break or something like that, you have an hour work break, it doesn't even matter. You can do 10 to 20 minutes of a workout and still get results. As long as you're keeping your body moving, getting your heart rate heart rate up, um, hit workout is definitely good for that kind of thing. Something that's gonna really get your heart rate up quick um, and then you'll be able to be out of there in 20 minutes. So even that works. Make sure that you have your healthy meals <laughs> available because you do get kind of famine after you work out, whether it be a protein shake, a fruit smoothie, or your actual lunch or something like that. So definitely have a schedule that you can do um, that uh, works around your schedule. My tip number seven is to completely forget about diets. Do not diet. This is not a diet uh, thing, okay? This is a lifestyle change. This is a life 
long decision that you're making okay this is, this, this is something that you want to stay consistent with so getting a di a diet automatically to me speaks temporarily speaks it's going to only last this amount of time because nobody realistically eats on a diet <laughs> you eat the way you eat <laughs> and it's and it's something that you can be consistent with it's something that you are looking forward to doing every single day for the rest of your life okay so if i plan on doing low carbs i plan on doing low carbs consistently i do do i have carbs i absolutely do because i do indulge on certain days where i feel like oh yes I will have ice cream, but guess what kind of ice cream I'm having? I'm having like a Rebel or my, uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't even think of it, but like Rebel ice cream is, is low in sugar, low, low sugar ice cream and it tastes just as sweet. I'll put pecans in there and I'm good to go. Like I'm not missing, you know, Ben and Jerry's <laughs> over there. I'm, I'm really not. Um, so having that, do I, like I said, I indulge in my cocktails sometimes. That has carbs in it because it has sugar. I'll, I'll even have some pomace, which is french fries here in Germany. I'll even have that on occasions. So I do not want to put myself in a situation where I feel like I'm going to fail. And if I feel like I want some pomace, I will have me some pomace. <laughs> okay? Um, don't diet. Um, it's, I feel like it's bad for you. It's bad for your mindset. I feel like it definitely hinders you more than it does motivate you to eat what's right. This is something that I want to put into my regimen on a daily basis. This is something I will feed my kids. This is something I want to feed my husband and this be our thing. You know, look forward to stuff like that. Um, so low carb means I don't have to have rice. I can have my cauliflower rice. I don't have to have macaroni and cheese with macaroni. I can have cauliflower mac and cheese and that tastes so freaking good. <laughs> you know, I don't have to have a spaghetti pasta. I don't have to have wonders bread. I can make my own bread using almond flour or coconut flour. I do that all the time. I would make a batch of bread and it takes only 50 minutes to make. And I have my bread for my sandwiches. I have my bread for if I want to make a toast with my almond butter on it. I have, you know, I have I have that kind of stuff that I'm looking forward to eating because one, I, it tastes good, and two, I know it's healthy. It doesn't have a lot of carbs in it. So don't diet. Change the way you eat. Change the things. Take your favorite food and just create a healthier option of it. You know, that's all you have to do. And then it becomes something that you can you know, consistently, consistently stick with. Okay, so tip number eight is take before and after pictures. You're always guaranteed to want to step on the scale and I will guarantee you that scale will not move for a little while when you're first starting because you are gaining muscle. You're burning fat, no doubt, but you are gaining muscle and people get so discouraged when they don't see the numbers of the scale drop. Look at your pictures that you take. Say, I started this workout 10 days ago. And 10, from, from 10 days to now, I'm gonna take my picture today. Look, I can already see my legs look a little bit firmer. Oh, I can already see my arms look a little bit fir firmer. I can see my turkey neck going down a little bit, you know? <laughs> you know, and, and then you, you, I can see that these shorts that I wore on the first day are fitting a little bit, you know, looser. Those are things that you can, that you can really see. If you've done, if you've done everything that you're supposed to be doing as far as eating and working out, you're going to get results. Taking before and after pictures also helps to motivate you and keeps you pushing. I want to see the best me. I want to see where I came from and where I am now. Even with sizing of your clothes, the certain clothes that you put on, they start to fit a little bit looser and stuff like that. And that makes you feel good. So taking before and after pictures help you stay motivated because say, I want to go to a birthday party and this birthday party has rib burgers, cake, ice cream, and all this kind of stuff. But if in my phone, I have this album that says workout. <laughs> And in that phone, and in that phone, I can go into those things and say, if I go ahead and eat that cake and ice cream and all that kind of stuff, I could go back to day one. I really could. It's possible. I've only been on this journey for four months, but I can indulge without indulging a whole lot. You know, maybe I'll have some cake, but I won't have ice cream. Maybe I'll just have ice cream, but I don't want cake. 
So looking at those pictures kind of push you back in the back. Time. Girl, get it together. Get it together because you don't want to go back to looking like that. You really don't. And you don't want to feel that sense of failure to know that, okay, all I had to do was just not eat that cake. I could have indulged in one thing, but not all three. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, taking before and after, after pictures definitely can help push you more and continue on with motivating you. Okay, tip number nine is to share. Share your journey with your friends and your family because guess what? They're just as excited as you are in, in your healthcare of you becoming the best you that you can be. If you share these things, not only will you have another source of support, you also have that test of accountability with them because these are the people that you care about. You care about what they think of you. You care about what how they perceive you. And if you're telling them that, yes, I'm going through a workout journey, I'm trying to get live healthier, I am trying to lose this amount of weight in this amount of time, you know, and they're looking forward to seeing what you can accomplish just like graduating high school just like graduating college you know you have family members who are rooting for you and so therefore that accountability is also on you so that way you can work even harder on your goal so share with your friends share with your family they too they see your results they see that you're working hard they too want to join you and that's even more motivation you know so don't be afraid to share your results share your life share everything that has to do with you becoming a better you and finally tip number 10 is to give yourself props girl give yourself some props because i hear a whole lot of women saying oh my gosh I know I lost five pounds, but I don't, I just, I just don't, I, that don't, but girl, stop. <laughs> okay. You lost five pounds. It doesn't matter. Progression is key. It doesn't matter if it took a month to lose five pounds. You lost five pounds. That's five pounds closer to your goal. Give yourself props. Give yourself a pat on the back for progressing. Do not linger and the expectations or the comparisons of other folks everybody's going to be different some people have lost way more weight by the time by in four months than i have and somebody has better better results i'm not going to be in the shape that i want to be in only four months i already know that but i am progressing towards it i am not giving up because i have a goal as long as you don't give up girl you are going to hit it okay you are going to thrive you are going to be elated <laughs> when you do get to that point okay so give yourself props do not allow yourself to droop down in depression do not allow yourself to droop down and ponder on negative energy good vibes only girl Boo, good vibes good vibes <laughs> okay that makes you feel so much better in progressing and continue on being consistent in your workout journey okay guys so that was it for my 10 tips that helped me lose a little bit over 30 pounds in three months <laughs> if you guys like this video please thumbs up this video please like and subscribe this video I have tons more content I want to give to you guys when it comes to my weight loss I have some hair tutorial stuff that I want to do now that I kind of got better at my hair I had uh, my hair had a, a whole thing going on especially after pregnancy and I had all that postpartum stuff so it was a lot but yes I have a whole lot of stuff going on with this um, weight loss journey that I'm going to. Like I said, I'm going to make a video on the uh, Chloe Ting that I'm, I'm currently doing now. I'm on day two right now and it's the two week uh, body shreds. So I have that to continue on and film for you guys. If you guys want to see more um, in detail, see some of the things that I'm doing as far as the meals that I am creating and um, some of the workouts that I'm doing from Beachbody or anything that, like that. If you're interested in Beachbody, you can definitely um, tell me and, and we can exchange emails and I can try to get you on the roll in becoming a Beachbody member and maybe you can try some of these programs. Beachbody has over like 400 workouts and with this whole social distancing and not being able to go to the gym, being able to work out at home in front of your TV, computer, whatever has been such a godsend for me and my family. I don't have to stop working out. I don't have to worry about going anywhere. I can be in my PJs if I want to <laughs> and work out. So yes, um, let me know if you are interested in Beachbody at all. Um, I'm here for you. 
to help you because others have been there to help me. I'm giving back, paying it forward. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's the end of this video. Um, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon. And always remember that happiness is healthy and happiness is beauty. <laughs>